in this video we are going to discuss about the differences between dfa and nfa mainly there are two types of finite automata are available the first one is deterministic finite automata the second one is non deterministic finite automata so totally we have five differences are there let us see all the differences one by one let's see the first point dfa is defined using a phi tuple m m stands for mission m is equal to q comma sigma comma delta comma q not comma f here q means a finite set of states sigma means input alphabet uh, input alphabet contains uh, some symbols uh, delta we will discuss about delta later q not means uh, initial state f means set of final states so here the mission will contains only one initial state but we can have a set of final states we can have multiple final states and let's see what is delta delta is a transition function which maps from q cross sigma to q so q is nothing but a state sigma is nothing but input alphabet and this q is nothing but a state so if we apply an input alphabet if we apply a symbol on q then we will move to another state so that is nothing but delta okay so whenever we apply an input symbol on a state we will move to another state okay now let us see how we can define nfa nfa is also defined using phi tuple m is equal to q comma sigma comma delta comma q not comma f here q sigma q not f are similar to dfa only so q means a finite set of states uh, sigma means uh, input alphabet uh, q not means uh, initial state f means a set of final states let's see what is delta delta is a transition function which maps from q cross sigma to 2 power q so that means here if we apply an input symbol on q then we can move to how many states 2 power q states whereas here we can move to only one state that we will discuss in second point also now let's see the second difference in case of dfa every transition generates single state with a particular input symbol let us see this example here if we apply input symbol a on state q then we are moving to q1 state so whenever we apply input symbol on a particular state then it generates only one state so here we have only one transition here we can have only one edge in dfa whereas coming to the nfa in case of nfa transition generates more than one outcome with a particular input symbol so here also we have input symbol a but if we apply a on q here we are getting q1 state uh, if we apply a on q we move to q2 state if we apply a on q we move to q3 state so that's why this is called as non deterministic finite automata this is called as deterministic finite automata so why this is called as deterministic finite automata because if we apply an input symbol on a state then it generates only one state deterministic means only one state whereas in nfa non deterministic if we apply an input symbol on a state then we can move to multiple states here we can have multiple transitions on a single input symbol here we can have multiple edges on a single input symbol input symbol is same only okay if we apply a on q we are getting three states here so why that's why this is called as nfa okay now let us see the third point every state must contain one transition with every input symbol in given alphabet okay let uh, input alphabet contains uh, two symbols a and b and let the states are like this q not q1 q2 then all the states must consume must use the symbols which are present in the alphabet so on q not so a should be applied on q not q1 q2 b should be applied on q not q1 and q2 so every state must use 
the corresponding symbols in the alphabet okay let us assume that we have five symbols in the alphabet such as a b c d e then all these states must use all the symbols in the alphabet so q not there should be some transition for q not on a b c d e there should be some transition for q1 on a b c d e like that now let us see the third difference here no need to maintain transition with every input symbol okay so here it is our choice so depends upon the problem we can consume we can use that symbol or if it is uh, not consumed then also there is no problem here okay uh, so let us assume that here we have three states uh, so let us assume that here uh, in this diagram there is no need of uh, there is no need to use b here then we can use only one symbol so q not on a q1 on a q2 on b that is enough here whereas in df here that is not possible every state must consume all the symbols in the alphabet let us see the next point it is difficult to construct dfa is difficult to construct than fa we will see that in the in future videos while solving the problems whereas nfa is very very easy to construct when compared with dfa why because there is no need to use all the symbols which are present in the alphabet whereas coming to the dfa each state must consume all the symbols in the alphabet even though it is not necessary so that is the problem here okay now let us see the last point epsilon transitions are not needed here okay epsilon inputs are not needed here epsilon means there is no symbol if there is no symbol also we can move from one state to another state but epsilon transitions are not possible here whereas in nfa epsilon transitions are allowed that means without applying the input also we can move from one state to another state okay these are the several differences between dfa and nfa